Hey coach, thanks for joining us. At Callaway Football, we're known for scoring points, but we sure don't like to give up any. During the course of an entire season, we only allowed an average of 7.2 points per game. And the main reason for that was we were a sound, fundamental tackling football team. So let's talk tackling. Coming up next, right here on the Callaway Football Network. Hey coach, your opponents can't score if you get the ball carrier on the ground. So we're going to discuss our tackling circuit. We'll start off and talk about the importance and purpose of the drill. Then we'll look at the structure, timing, and tempo, and how it sets up. And then we'll look at some live video of the drill being performed on the field by some players. And we'll wrap the lesson up with all the key coaching points we know will be beneficial to you. We want you to be the best tackling team in your league, region, and state. So let's go to the board and get the lesson started. All right, coaches, here we are on the board for today's lesson. As I mentioned, we're going to be discussing our tackling circuit. This is an introductory lesson on how we set up and structure our tackling circuit. Tackling is a fundamental skill to winning football. We all know that as coaches. So the tackling circuit is a part of our daily warm-up period in our practice schedule. We do it every single day as we get practice underway. We believe all players should participate in the drill, so we make all our position players, no matter what position, uh, participate in this drill as a team drill. We keep our players in small groups to maximize reps, and I think that's an absolute key to making your team a better tackling team, to make sure that the the, uh, groups that you're putting together are small groups and that they maximize the amount of reps that each player is participating in. So we're conditioning and training our players both how to safely and properly tackle in the tackling circuit drill. So here's what it looks like on a setup. We'll set it up in four stations typically is how we normally do it. Uh, Station one, station two, three, and four. Now, if you have a large team, uh, you're a high school team, uh, and you want to mirror this drill to make sure that you keep your lines short and your groups small. So you may have uh, two station ones going facing each other. Uh, two station twos, two threes, and two station fours, again, to make sure that you're keeping these groups small so that your players are getting a rep every 15, 20, maybe 25 seconds at the longest. They're back up at the front of the line getting another rep. That's an absolute key to winning football. So we do four stations in our tackling circuit. It is a 10-minute period on our schedule. Uh, So each station lasting two minutes apiece, so that's four stations times the two minutes, gives you a total of eight minutes. So we've built in two extra minutes for station transition. So that time is built into our schedule so that the players can rotate stations. So when that whistle blows, it's a signal to the players uh, that we're, we're rotating stations. And again, we've got a coach on the watch making sure every two minutes that we're rotating through the four stations. So we're looking for constant movement during this drill. It's a very fast paced drill, a very high energy period, both from the players as well as the coaches. We're bringing a lot of enthusiasm, excitement, and high energy and fast paced movement during this entire 10 minute period. We're asking the players to go full speed up to the point of contact, but we are not tackling or not taking players all the way to the ground in this drill. It's really working on fundamentals, getting to point of contact with right fundamentals and going through the proper tackling motion, but uh, we're not actually taking the player to the ground as we make the hit lick. So again, we're looking for reps, reps, and reps. In that 10-minute period, players are getting a lot of reps, really training that body how to properly and safely tackle. So again, the Four stations that we typically schedule into our tackling circuit period is station one will be the stick drill. Station two is our fire to fit drill. Station three is our open field tackling drill. And then that fourth station is a drill that we call rip to flat drill. So the stick drill is really a good fundamental uh, tackling drill. The fire to fit really works more defensive back stand up uh, uh, techniques to get off of a uh, block out on the edge and get to a ball carrier, open field tackling drill, kind of self-explanatory, but it's real good for special team tackling on punt coverage or kick coverage. And that rip to flat drill is a drill that we do. Uh, It's really good for the linemen, linebackers, defensive end types, as well as the defensive backs, but it's really a line of scrimmage type drill, how to rip through a block and stay flat down the line of scrimmage and chase, chase a ball carrier. 
But we will do additional tackling circuit drills. We have a variety of drills that we'll plug into here. So one of the four stations may diff be different from practice to practice, but these are the four basic drills that we like to do because it really covers a lot of different aspects of the tackling that we're trying to teach. So let's go take a look at some video for you. Here's a still shot image of what it actually looks like on the field. As the diagram pointed out, we've got the four different stations here, as you see. And when we whistle blows, you'll see the kids are moving stations and going to the different group. And of course, we have two minute stations, four stations. So that's eight minutes with some transition time in between. Basically, this is a 10 minute warm up period that we start every practice with. Here's a good field level view of the tackling circuit drill. The camera is panning from right to left here, so uh, the first station you're seeing here in the center of the screen is actually station four. That's our rip to fit drill. Uh, we'll go over each of these drills in, in lessons two, three, and four here coming up next. But uh, the station three here is obviously our open field tackling drill. As the camera pans here, the station two is our fire to fit drill. And then on the far left, station one is what we call our stick drill. But we're preaching pace and tempo here. We're preaching reps, form tackling, uh, doing things the right way, getting our head out of contact, hitting on the rise and all the things we've talked about and keeping tempo and pace to the drill. All right, coaches, let's talk about some of the key coaching points that we stress during the tackling circuit. In all the drills that we do in our tackling circuit, there's some fundamental things that we want to make sure that we're coaching and teaching our players as we do the tackling circuit. Uh, first off, we want to make sure that we're always telling them, hey, we're going full speed up to contact, but we are not taking the players to the ground in this drill. We're working on proper fundamentals and form at the point of contact, making sure that uh, we're coaching them up and all the keys that we want to make sure that we're stressing. Always focus on safety. Heads up tackling is an absolute must. Keep our players safe today. Some of the keys are we want to focus on proper weight distribution and body control, make sure that as we're approaching the ball carrier that we're under control. We want to get to the ball carrier's toes. We have a term that we use called toes on toes. So we want to get to their near leg. We say, hey, near leg, near shoulder. That's what our target is on the uh, ball carrier. We want to make sure that we're not getting overextended and we're reaching for a ball carrier. We want to get up to their toes and near leg them. We want to make sure that we're bending at the knees and not bending at the waist. We don't want to bend at the waist and flatten out our back. That drops our head and eye level. That's an unsafe position. So we want to bend at the knees and get that tail down as we get ready to strike the ball carrier. One of the keys is making sure that our players know how to tackle someone with our arms and our hands. So our arms and our hands will originate from our hips as a tackler, go through the ball carrier's hips, and then up and through their armpits. So we want to make sure that the players are not in a hugging position. We're not trying to hug our opponent. We're trying to tackle them and get them on the ground. So we keep our hands and our arms tight to our hips, fire them from our hips through the ball carrier's hips, and then come up and through as we rise coming up under the armpits with violent hands and arms ripping up and through the ball carrier's armpits. We call that the forklifting motion. I've got some video that I'm going to show you in just a second about uh, how to coach that. And then, of course, we want to wrap up, wrap up and finish the job and get that ball carrier on the ground. The other thing that uh, we always are stressing is, hey, when we strike the ball carrier, we want to strike and hit on the rise so that we're changing levels at contact, coming from low to high, and that we're unloading our hips through our core to generate the power and lift we need to do a good sound fundamental tackle. We want to make sure that we're taking our head out of the strike zone and out of the collision point keeping our eyes to the sky and eyes and head up at contact. Safety is an absolute must in today's game. And then finally, we're always preaching as we see our players make contact and begin to wrap up that we're running our feet through the ball carrier. So we'll constantly be saying, run your feet, drive for five, and finish, and finish strong. We want to make sure that we're finishing strong and getting that player on the ground. So let's go take a look at a little bit of video and highlight a few of these coaching points. All right, coaches, as we uh, take a look at some video, let's look at a few still shots first and discuss a few of the key coaching points we just went over. This is a good illustration in this still shot of uh, what not to do with your arms and hands as you approach the ball carrier. As you can see here, he's got his hands and his arms fired all the way back behind his hips. Uh, that is not a good, safe, proper tackling position to be in. We want them to originate from their hips with their hands as they approach the ball carrier, not firing their arms all the way back. So we want to coach that out of the players 
mainly because it drops your head level and your eye level down and it flattens out your back slightly. It makes you want to have to lead with a head. And we want to coach that out of the players so that it can stay safe. Plus, it's not really a good position to be in. If the running back makes a move, your hands are so far back, you can't recover and hopefully uh, get the ball carrier on the ground if he's uh, making a move on you. But uh, the proper way to coach this is make sure that your hands are only come back to your hips and keep them tight to your body, originating from your hips, and fire them up through the ball carrier's hips uh, is a much better way to coach it. So here is a uh, example of him doing it the right way. So we kind of reloaded the video. This is a still shot of his second take. A couple things that are good here. He's originating contact. You see his hands are coming here from his hips as he begins to unload his weight. And then he near legs him. So the next step, you can see he gets to his toes. Toes on toes. He's near leg the ball carrier. This is the ball carrier's near leg right here. He has gotten to his toe. Uh, and he's in a good, sound, fundamental tackling position. You can also see his hands are coming up and through in a forklifting type position. So that's exactly the right way that we want to coach it. And that also creates your head to come up out of the contact as you take your eyes to the sky. So let's roll some film and let you look at it in full speed. All right, coaches, this is a slow motion of that video. You can see his hands originate from his hips. Arms are tight up and through in a forklifting motion and eyes are to the sky. Let's take a look at it full speed. Good sound fundamental tackle. All right, coaches, a couple final coaching points for you real quick. We ask a lot of our players as coaches, we ask them to work hard. We ask them to get better every single day, to give us all they've got. So as coaches, we need to be asking the same things of ourselves. So the question we need to ask ourselves as coaches, are we improving ourselves every day? At Callaway Football, we're providing coaches at all levels from college, high school, and youth the resources and tools that you need to do exactly that. There are multiple ways to interact and to connect with us. First off, you're probably watching this lesson today on our YouTube channel. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button right now and become a subscriber of our YouTube channel. It's called the Callaway Football Network. We are producing weekly shows and lessons that we're putting out on YouTube every week for coaches at all age groups. So we really think it's a tremendous resource for you. And of course, cost you nothing to hit that red subscribe button and stay on top of what we're producing. Uh, in the description below, you'll find uh, the stick drill link. So you can go straight out to the uh, stick drill and see that specific lesson, as well as links to the fire to fit drill, the open field tackling drill, the rip to flat drill, all of those tackling circuit lessons and the specifics on each lesson are found right underneath in the description. Just click that link. It'll take you out to CallawayFootball.com. And there's much more available out at the website than just the tackling circuit. But uh, it is a good source of information for you. Once you get out to CallawayFootball.com, you can get logged into our training center. And in that training center, you'll find a wealth of information from every drill you can imagine, how to set up your practice, how to do schedules and scripts, how to manage parents, all of the player information you can imagine, a 600-page playbook. And specifically, as we talked about today, that tackling, those tackling circuit drills are part of our warm-up period in our schedules. Another thing that we do in that warm-up period, we do a noose drill, a pat-and-go drill, and the offensive linemen have their warm-up drills. All of that information can be found at our training center out at CallawayFootball.com. So we encourage you to go get a membership out there at the website. We have free memberships available for you, as well as premium level memberships, which are what most coaches want to do. They sign up for that premium level membership so they have complete access to all the drills and the complete premium member library that we have for you out there. We are committed to helping coaches be more successful. We also uh, have a Twitter account. You can follow us on Twitter at CallawayFB is our Twitter handle, as you see right there, as well as a Facebook page. You can go to facebook.com slash CallawayFootball. So we're giving you multiple ways to connect with us and to get information from us. We are committed to coaches becoming a better, more successful coach and teaching the game the right way. Coaches, that to be all for today's episode. Until next time, I'll see you on the field.